Welcome to Season 2, Episode 57 of Talking Prisoner. Back in 1984, Prisoner introduced a character whose arc brought out a side to Joan Ferguson that none of us had ever seen before. Tackling challenging and even taboo storylines for its time, ranging from custody disputes to confronting issues like pedophilia and parental abuse. His portrayal added depth to the series and beyond Prisoner, his work spans acclaimed shows like Zoo Family, Saturday and Carson's Law. Ladies and gentlemen, it's truly an honour to welcome a talent who has left an incredible mark on Australian television history. Joining us today is Robert Summers, who of course played Shane Munro on Prisoner. Welcome to Talking Prisoner and good afternoon, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you uh, zooming in from? Um, from my study. Study? No, I mean, what state? From home. Sydney. Sorry, Sydney. No, great. It's great to have you on. Um, now, before we get into prisoner, we just want to learn a little about you. Where did you grow up as a child? So, uh, I in Melbourne, obviously, because I'm from Melbourne. Um, I was in grew up in the western suburbs. Um, essentially, I moved to Sydney in for a job in 1998, and I've been here ever since. But Melbourne, basically, and it used to take me an hour and a half to get to Nanawari each day. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So do you prefer Melbourne or Sydney? Uh, Sydney now, because I've been here for 29 years. Oh, wow. So, well, 20, yeah, 26, 27 years. Yeah. So all my family is still in Melbourne. Okay. So obviously. So I'm the only one. We moved to Sydney. Yeah. And um, what was school life like for you? How did you go at school? School was good. It was, um, it, I mean, basically from year seven, I was doing prisoner. So that was weird because basically I, I basically sort of um, at four o'clock in the morning, I'd go to Channel 10 in Nanawari. I'd film and then I'd go back in a cab and go to school, and then they picked me up in a cab from school, and I and I filmed till probably about ten o'clock at night. You wouldn't be able to do that now as a child, told for person, but it was crazy. And it, and it was actually kind of what was really weird about it is it was actually kind of normal for me. It wasn't actually abnormal to me because before prisoner, I'd done a lot of commercials, um, a lot of sort of um, stage shows, so. I, I just never sort of saw it as weird. I mean, I've got a twin brother and he thought it was weird, but I didn't. I was just sort of like, you'd be in the cab on the way to a prisoner and just learning your lines. Yeah. And, you know, you go into the green room. and you just, I, I, When I first started, I'd go into the green room and I'd see all this. So we were never allowed to, li never allowed to watch prisoner as children. And so we'd sneak up in into the into the bedroom of my grand grandparents and they had a TV in the back room and we'd watch it. And my mum would come and turn it off. So when I was in it, it all changed. <laughs> it's really strange because I knew all the characters. So when I first started and I saw all these characters, I was just like my 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 mind was blown. Yeah. You know, making a battery. You know, she was just like I used to watch her all the time. And she was so amazing. She was just so amazing. So, you, so she was always kind of like really, um, really uh, nurturing to me because I was really sort of like, I mean, yeah, I was 12. So everyone was like adults. Yeah. So it was really strange. And my dad, I remember my dad came the first time and I was like, Dad, don't come again. It's embarrassing. Because, you know, you're like 12, you're like, Dad, don't come again. And he was like, she actually really sort of like, what? I was like, I can do it myself, Dad. <laughs> you had a twin brother. Uh, I do have a twin brother. Yeah, wow. Well. And he was actually very, he was so cool. He was never sort of, um, um, I know my agent asked him whether he wanted to act. I was like, no, no, thanks. So he just was really sort of, he's a chill person. He's actually a, um, a police um a police sergeant in Melbourne. So we couldn't be more different. 
So, so he didn't he try and play off your fame him. at all? Or? Sorry? He didn't try and play off your fame at all back in the day? No. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. I mean, I, gave, I bought him a bike. <laughs> that was about it. <laughs> Rob, but no, Robert... not at all. He was really chilled. He was actually, I was more um, competitive. I mean, essentially, I used to go into auditions and just basically go, you go to the cattle call where there's like kids everywhere. And I used to think, oh, I'm going to get this. I'll get this. So I was quite, not confident, but I wasn't intimidated. Wow. What was it like with the other kids at, at high school? You're saying you were in year seven at the time. I mean, prison had a huge following in high schools. Oh, uh, yeah, so what were the no, kids like? It wasn't, my, my episodes didn't play until I was in Zoo Family. And so I was um, shooting at the zoo and I had, like, if, they, if there are school groups there, they go mental. And that, to me, was, like, really strange. And there's me, there's a picture of me kind of signing autographs over the back of the fence of the of, of where our studios were. And there was, like, all these kids. And, like, I couldn't, I couldn't get my head around it. But, you know, also, you know, um, at school... Everyone was actually quite fine. I didn't have any problem at all because they were all sort of like a bit, a little bit in awe. I don't know, I don't know, but in awe, but they didn't, it didn't tease me. It was just sort of like, it was just sort of, um, here's this person who's on TV. And they they actually, there wasn't actually any, any incidents at all, actually. No, no bullying or anything. No, I I don't sort of mean bullying or teasing, but were no, they no, saying no. things like were they saying things? Oh, what's 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 the freak like in real life, and what oh, happens? Yeah, they, they need to say, hey, what, Joan, yeah. hey, Joan. <laughs> you know, did they want to know about the storylines? You know, no, no, what's not red at like all. No, no, not at all. Um, they would just sort of like it would just be like sort of hey, Joan, or something like you know, I don't know, something just it was quite easy actually. Funny enough, for a Western suburb of school, <laughs> high school. Did you miss much school because of prisoner, like being on prisoner? Yeah, time? I mean, no, yeah. Uh, uh, more, I will say family, I actually had a tutor. But prisoner, like I said, I used to go at 4 o'clock in the morning, shoot until 8, go to school, and come home and get a cab and shoot until... 10 o'clock and sometimes like on a so Monday was rehearsals Tuesday Wednesdays was shooting in in the um in the studio and probably Thursday too but Friday was location so essentially when we basically when we um did location um Maggie would always drive in her in her uh, white white Alfa Romeo which I thought was really cool Oh, that's cool. So she'd drive into location. <laughs> and then essentially when I got stuck in a drain, as you know, um, they actually had fire hoses to make it rain. So when I actually went into the drain because I'd lost, because Nikki had gone, my dog had gone in there. Um, was that actually your dog? Had, or was that, a, was that a, a, a dog provided by a prisoner? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't my dog. <laughs> but they actually not named him Packy. But he wouldn't come to Packy. So they actually, the dog handler said his real name's Nikki. So I was, it became Nikki. And then I remember what happened. I'll tell you about the drain thing first. So they had the fire hoses up, and then apparently Nikki went into the drain. So I went to like to search room, and then all of a sudden, this like a pedophile, like a man. Window down, I said, Oh, do you need some help? I got into the drain, into the real drain, just a little bit. And then essentially, the whole drain sequence where I'm stuck was actually in studio. So it was a, a huge cylinder, like a, a hard, hard cardboard cylinder. And I would get myself wedged, and there'd be a camera at the front filming me. And so when they started, they thought, oh, we'll put some wall water down. But it was fogging up the camera. So they said, oh, okay, so get out. You need to put a wetsuit on. 
and we're just going to hook um, what well, um, cold water down. So they're just washing cold water down. So I would, I would basically get in there at sort of, like I said, sort of four o'clock. I'd get in into the into the cylinder, get myself wedged in my wetsuit, have the water rushing, and like you know, doing my lines, and then I'd I'd get out, get the wetsuit off, and go to school. It was just so bizarre. I now now I'm saying it, it's quite bizarre. Was that just one then, shoot in the train, or was that a couple of sort of different day over, over a period of a couple of days? Oh, it was like probably two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Wow. wow. Yeah. So they basically they film a lot and then just say cut it, and then essentially what they did was when I actually sort of was when um, Maker Patrick was sort of at the end of the drain and I was actually freed. So they had a they had a uh, microphone in the drain and and again the fire hoses because it's raining and so I'm saying help me honey Joan help me honey Joan and then basically they had a stunt double fall out and into the water oh. and then and then I was saved <laughs> and the guy who was trying to help me get out of the get out of the um drain died. So I was like, oh, where is he? And Joe was like, oh, I think he's in the hospital. <laughs> and then she said, oh, he actually died. And I was like, oh. Anyhow, that's that's a drain story. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Really cool. So um obviously you're doing scenes at the studio. So did you get did you get to see other scenes being shot like that you weren't in? Actually. Yeah, absolutely. So you're in the in the green room. And there's a big screen of what's being filmed. So, you know, you're, and then the um, assistant will say you're next. Or so you, so you kind of wait a little while because you can see that they're filming the scene again. Um, and then I remember when I was filming and uh, she said to me, Maggie said to me, if you make a mistake, make a big mistake because otherwise, They'll just keep filming because basically they'll film in two hours, two hours a week of, of prisoner. So that's a lot to film. So basically there was sort of like, she said to me, if you're going to fluff your lines, fluff them really badly because they'll do a retake. So, but the green room was like, it was full of all these people that I've watched all the time. I'm like, it's doing my head in. <laughs> <laughs> you're right in front of me. <laughs> And, that and it was, like, it, it was actually intimidating. It was, it was uh, funnily, because I because I was like twelve, I was quite confident at the time, and it didn't actually intimidate me. But I was kind of like, "Wow, I just watched you on TV last week. Now I'm here." <laughs> so, how did you um like get the role? Did you know like did you go through an oh, audition? That's really interesting. So, um, I was in a play. Um, this is just a quick backstory. I was in a play, a local play in Williamstown in Victoria, and Oliver and and uh, uh, my agent was there to watch it, looking for a child actor. And then she picked me out, and then spoke to my parents and said, "You know, no, I'm, a, I'm an agent. Would your would your child like to do acting?" And they were kind of like, they, they went back and forth, back and forth, with it, unbeknownst to me. And then mum said to me, look, you know, do you want to act? And so that sort of went from there. And then, so was yeah, acting, and then was acting something you wanted to do as, as a child? or No. Oh, yeah, I was always a bit of a show off. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why um, my mum's friend said he should, he should go do a play or something. He should go into acting. Yeah. And so I was sort of, it just went from there. And then um, Jan Russ, I mean, essentially, she said, you know, there's a, a part for a child in, in prison that sort of wants to soften the freak. And so um, I went and saw Jan Russ, who you know, yeah. and she basically saw me about, I think she saw me 
um, I wasn't even I wasn't even high school, so I was probably eleven and a half, probably probably um, November, October the year before. I didn't hear anything, so I thought, oh well, I didn't get it. And then she called in like um, January and said, "You've got it." And it was like it was it was it was it was like what? Because <laughs> I had forgotten about it. Not forgotten about it, but I sort of thought I didn't get it. So Jan Russ has been was amazing to me. So she's cast me in a few things. Yeah. She's just been great, and she and she was and she saw the excitement on, on my face. I was just like, I can't believe this. <laughs> so it's amazing. How good's Jan Russ? I mean, she started the career. She's incredible. Um, yeah, I mean, she's. I mean, I'm. Not a star, but she's, you know, made a lot of stars. Yeah. 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 You know Jan, don't you, Tim? Or... No, I don't. Oh, okay. I thought you did. <laughs> <laughs> a casting agent. So you actually or did you, you did a screen test or was it just based on interview? No, no, I did a screen, I did a screen test. So I think there was probably... I don't know. I think it was a cattle call again. So I think there was probably five or six or seven other people. But I mean, I had blonde hair. I had like a, I just had a, a distinct look. But I, I don't, I don't know actually what it was. You know, it, it's just, you know, who knows? I mean, I lost a lot of, I, I lost a few, a, a lot of parts. But prison was a really good part because it was only supposed to be for three, if I can remember, three months, four months. And because as it went, it, it, it kept getting extended to like nine months. Oh, so no. nine months in total, I was something. Wow. I didn't know it was I know. I know. It was, it was supposed to be three months just to show a soft side of Joan. And then as it went, it just kept, they just kept adding me, adding me, adding me. <laughs> so it was like, that's okay. <laughs> what was your, um... you... sorry, Tim, you go. And as, so you were aware that, you know, basically you were leveraged to show a softer side of, of Joan Ferguson. Were you aware of like the storylines of the custody battle, running away, the drain, the dog? Um, the, more uh, so, um, the, uh, the, yeah, the, the you... abuse, you know, coming from an abusive father and all that sort of thing that like there was some heavy stuff and like it was a, heavy stuff you know that, yeah it probably wouldn't happen now being a, with, putting a 12 year old actor with you know bruises and all this sort of stuff oh god the amount of makeup i used to have to sit in the chair and i was like <clears throat> i hate set, sitting still it literally used to take like two hours of makeup to put bruises on me <clears throat> but essentially um i realized Sorry, Rob, we're losing you just for us. My dad, my my dad, she was so like it's all acting. Sorry? No, no, I think we've lost. Oh, can you hear me? No, yeah, just we're... the last 30 seconds you just froze. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Start again. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What is going on with technology? It's all good. I, mean, I think you're talking about the makeup and, uh, yeah. Yeah, so essentially it used to take me like two hours in the makeup chair to do bruises. And I was like, oh, God, this is so boring. Like, you know, essentially it was it was like two hours. And essentially, um, you know, there was, heavy, there was a lot of heavy stuff in my for my character. But for me, it was just acting. Like my dad was actually my abusive dad was actually really nice, so he was a great guy. Um, um and, 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 uh, we were in a uh, where we. So I actually had to. So I don't know who lived there, but I had to sort of just go in, in like just in the door, and like um. Manufacturer would come out and, and you know say give me you know 
I, I, what are you doing with your, your son? And I come out with all these bruises. It's like, hi, honey, Joan. <laughs> so, so it was just really strange because it's just, um, it's sort of, um, it's just acting. So I didn't actually feel like at the time it was sort of like traumatic. Yeah. I mean, I remember one time, um, I remember one time I, um, there was a, I don't know where I was, but it was in a, in a block of flats in Richmond. And I'm not sure what happened, but I was there for some reason. And a pedophile tried to make a move on me. And I, and I threw hot water, hot water in his face, which wasn't hot water, obviously, and just ran. And... Yeah, it was pretty heavy stuff at the time, wasn't it? <laughs> no one questioned no, anything about I mean, it. Just, for me, it was just sort of like, no, exactly. And no, it was sort of like, even the fire hose is like, like raining down, like, you know, so it's raining. It's like, oh, that's just acting. That's just, that's what they're doing. The only thing was when I, um when they put me in the ambulance, they actually put a mask over me and that freaked me out. That was the only thing that really freaked me out. I couldn't deal, I couldn't deal with that. So I was just kind of like, and they were saying like this, just just oxygen in it, just just breathe. And I was like, oh, that was the only thing I can remember that was a bit freaky. How'd you go? And that's pretty plain, actually. <laughs> how, how did you go in COVID when we all had to wear masks? Oh, that was that was all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different kind of mask. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. You work you, you work pretty. I mean. Very closely with Maggie Kirkpatrick, who played your stepmom or whatever, um, yeah. you know, Ferguson. And there was a relationship there, and it did bring out, you know, showed that that character was like three dimensional, not just, you know, a sadistic lesbian, et cetera. But did, yeah. did you actually get to meet Maggie before you shot your scenes to build up some kind of rapport? To, if, or was it a natural, organic thing? Did you just say, hi, I'm I think Rob? It was a natural, organic thing. I think it was a natural, organic thing. I don't think I met her before. So the first um, day you walked up and... Oh, no, oh, actually, and... we did some publicity shots before, so I hadn't met her before. So we did some sort of um, TV week um, lead up to the to my character entering. So I remember that she bought me, because there was a um, Fox FM used to be there in another one too. So she bought me a Fox FM, like, top. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I could wear it. I mean, I, I'm not kidding. And I, I sort of thought, what am I going to wear? And she goes, here, I'll get you this. And so she bought, and we had quite a few publicity shots. So, yeah, I think, I, I actually can't remember. I'm like, I'm 51 now. I was 12. So, but I'm pretty sure I met her before. Hey, Tim, her how good was Fox no, FM back in, in the 80s? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was unreal in my Fox FM and my shell necklace. <laughs> and it was really funny too because box. when you're filming, you can't, when you're filming, you can't actually, um, you can't do anything with your hair. So my hair sort of got long and slowly they just cut my hair. But in case you had to do like, um, um, what do you call them? Um, retakes. Like retakes. So, I had they had to just sort of cut my hair slowly, but after a while, my hair was like wild. <laughs> Not like now. Yeah. Hey, um, you mentioned Maggie gave you some advice about not, you know, if you're going to fluff your lines, fluff them in a big way. But did any of the other cast members have any advice for you, being such a young age coming onto that show? Um, Maxine. Um, Galactus was really nice to me and told me a few things, just sort of like, um, just be yourself. Um, I can't remember actually what she, she told me, but she was really friendly to me as well. I actually bonded with her quite well. Um, Maxine, um, Rob, Maxine told me a story once years ago, um, that she said, oh, there was a young actor who, you know, he was playing the freak son and it was his last day on the show. Oh, really? and, yeah. She, she told me, oh, this is probably about 15 years ago and she said oh yeah. it was his last day on the show and like no one did anything for him so me and Genevieve went to the Channel 10 canteen oh and that's he, right that's he told right. you bought, they bought all these lollies and they gave it oh, to you that's right. I, I realize I it must have been you. so you remember that 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do remember that now. Oh my that's god, a... that's just jogged my memory. <laughs> so yeah, that she said, you that's know, right. she bought all these lollies and gave it to you, and you know, because they felt bad because no one was doing giving you a goodbye party or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, they didn't actually because yeah, they, I mean, they didn't do that for anybody actually. If people just left the show, they just kind of they said, oh, see you, and you know, good luck. But also, it was just sort of like because it was a because it was a series and they were, were filming so so many episodes, like two episodes a week, um, no one had time to say goodbye to. I mean, they, they would say goodbye. They said goodbye to me. And a lot of people did. But um, I, I guess, no, I, I guess essentially I didn't know when my final scene was going to be because I got fostered out like, um, Joan lost custody of me. I got fostered out. Um, there was quite a few episodes <clears throat> with my new family and with Joan visiting, and I was being very possessive of her. And then I didn't really know the end of my scenes. So <clears throat> until I actually read next week's episode, and, and basically I wasn't in it. And 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 get Maggie Barrett, get back. She said, "I think that's probably your. You know, this is probably the end." And, oh, that's and how you yeah, find. they did. They did my buy me lollies. I remember that now. But essentially, it was really strange because um, then after I left, she would she would be on the phone apparently to me, and then I sort of just piece it out, like as you do, you know, in a series. Wow. Did you want to stay on it? Were, were you hoping to stay on it longer? I mean, obviously, you did get to stay no, on it. No, no, I, I, like nine months. I, well, I, I, no, not really. I, it's sort of like, um, I didn't actually think about it at the time, to be honest. Yeah. I did. I, it's really strange. I just, I just sort of thought, okay, so this is the end. This is probably the end. That's okay. Nine months. And, and nine months as a 12 year old feels like two years. You know, it does. Yeah. So it, it actually felt like a long time. And I remember I remember um Joan saying to me, um, sorry, me saying to me quite a few times, stop whining so much. Because I used to whine my, my voice would go high. And I, and I watch it now, I'm like <laughs> So she was actually sort of told me, you know, just just lower lower your voice. Cause I was I was just, you know. This is my first television series I was in, like for nine months. I've, I, I, like I said, I've done TV commercials and stuff like that, but you're just miming or you're just talking. But when I was doing Prisoner, I just sort of like, I was sort of floundering a bit at the start. And since I, she was saying like, you know, bring, the, bring your voice down. And like, she was actually quite good. So she was actually quite, um, not actually, she just said it so nicely. And I was like, oh, actually... Okay. Did you, did you learn if you're quite saying a lot, it, as far as screen acting is concerned, but particularly being so young, did you feel as if you learned a lot from Maggie? Um, absolutely. You know, hitting marks. Absolutely. And, she was just, yeah. what she, else? Was, um, she took me under her wing and she was so incredibly nice to me. And she was um, always accommodating. She'd drive me everywhere in her, as I said, in her, her Alfa Romeo, white Alfa Romeo, which I thought was incredible. Um, she'd always, she was always helped me. And even even when we were doing, um, like, um, advertising spots, like for, like I said, so for, um, you know, TV Week or, or New Idea, she'd say, okay, let's do this. She was just really great about it. So she's just always she was always so nice, really lovely. I have nothing nothing to say about her about how incredible she was. Yeah. There was a scene. Um, I, mean, I don't know if you can recall. I just said it was like forty years ago, or whatever. But there was a scene where I think you're having an argument or something, and I watched it recently in preparation for this, where she slaps you, and um, you're having an argument, and the oh, look on did. your face, the look yeah, on your she face, did. Like, she she didn't actually actually slap you. I'm going to slap you properly just so i get your reaction i said okay that's fine <laughs> and she left it like the, the whole figure her, her hand was on my hit me 
And she and, and it was good for the camera because it was real. And I and my reaction was was actually what she wanted. So she and I actually I don't think she said she was going to slap me, but she actually did. And then my reaction was like I can't remember actually. Uh, yeah, actually, I can't remember whether she actually said she was going to. No, I don't think she did. She did it like before mm. I knew it, because that that's so she get a reaction. And it worked, I know right? because Who it was gets a with that now. <laughs> I couldn't do that. Now. Could, you, could you do that now? You will do that to a twelve-year-old now. <laughs> oh, a million years. <laughs> Who can work with a twelve-year-old now? <laughs> oh, I know. I know. <laughs> There was, um, speaking of scenes, I, I just want to read something. The one that you did at McDonald's with Maggie. Um, oh. We put that photo <laughs> up just recently of you and Maggie and Barry Paul, yeah. one of the camera guys on Prisoner who we've uh, interviewed, he he made a comment. I just want to read it quickly if I can. Um, I remember shooting the scenes with Maggie and the kid at McDonald's in Blackburn. Me, <laughs> the, the kid. The kid. <laughs> Um, Barry's a lovely guy. McDonald sent yeah. out the PR person to make sure the burger looked exactly like the picture on the display board. They oh. even went to the extreme of using a pair of scissors to cut the lettuce around the burger to give it the perfect look. Every time the burger was manhandled in the scene, the burger was replaced so there was no finger indentation would be seen on the burger bun. McDonald's really took their corporate image seriously. And I must admit, the burgers used in the scenes looked a whole lot better than the ones being sold to the general public. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I remember that. And I remember that they closed the McDonald's and they had all extras in it. And I was like in, like I was like a kid at the candy store. They just keep, basically before they filmed, I was I was goring myself. I was, I was eating all the McDonald's I could. And then I remember that they were, Basically, I think there was a food stylist there who was doing like I mean, I, I used to work in advertising before af afterwards after uh, um, being a child actor, and like food stylists, they have like, they have their like um, knives, like um, you know, uh, uh, scalpels and everything, and they they and they used to do I, I don't know what they did then, but they used to use tampons and they would light them. So that the, the steam would go off the burger. So I don't know what happened then, but that's what happened when I was when I was a art director. Uh, those later. scenes, those scenes in McDonald's and um, the roller rink, we'll talk about in a minute. But like, I think that's a great oh, time, time capsule because in those days, McDonald's, it was still those polystyrene kind oh, that's of. That's right. I know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They actually remember they still had the little silver ashtrays that had the M in it in the actual McDonald's yeah. store. And I think the yeah. best thing about that scene with with um with you and the freak is the fact that you're eating burgers and the fries. She has southern chicken, and nobody went to McDonald's. <laughs> to order <laughs> southern fries. Like McDonald's. I actually food. forgot until I saw that picture. I actually forgot that they actually did uh, chicken. Yeah, they used to call it southern like, fries. I totally chicken. forgot. Yeah, southern so, fried you know, chicken to go against Kentucky. <laughs> you know, as it was called back then, and no one and it really. Was funny because yeah, because the, the McDonald's was like not far from Channel Ten, so obviously you, you know where it is in another wadding. So it was basically ten minutes from from Channel Ten. So this is why, <laughs> obviously, it was there. And I really <laughs> don't think a soapy could shoot in McDonald's these days. It would be so much red tape. Oh, um, can you imagine? Yeah, yeah can you imagine? No. Yeah, it happened. So Who the roller rink. have a uh, McDonald's birthday party as a kid. <laughs> oh, me, I did. Yeah, me too. <laughs> there are a lot of fun. Yeah. So the roller so rink. talk about the roller that, rink? Yeah, was that was that Caribbean roller armor or the one in Bayswater? <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I can't actually remember where it was, but it, it would have been in Nunawadi because it's it, it, all the locations were near Nunawadi. So even the even the drain scenes and stuff was probably fifteen minutes from Nunawadi from the from the studios. So essentially it's not all that money. I can't remember where it was. I think it was in Nunawadi. Is that is that is that the Caribbean in Nunawadi? I have That's no idea. Roadhead. I can't remember where That's, it was. Yeah. yeah. It's not far from Nunawadi. Oh. 
Yeah, it wouldn't be far. Oh, well, that'd be probably it yeah, then. Because everything was not far from, every every location wasn't far from Nunawadi, except for um, where my dad lived in Richmond. And that was the furthest they ever travelled because essentially it was all about costs and, you know, money, I guess. <laughs> yeah. What were those? Um, what were those things like to shoot at the roller rink? Seeing the uh, seeing the freak fall fall flat. Ah, uh, I don't remember a lot about that. That I know that she it was you know she was just acting. Um, I think she could she could actually skate quite well, probably better than me. But yeah, it was all sort of like um, it was. It was funny at the time, if I remember correctly, but she, um, I don't know. I can't, I can't remember a lot about it, but I think that she was she was pretending she couldn't skate, so that was all right. So I thought, I thought that was quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I I I I actually used to roll skate, you know, um, around the corner from me. So I used to love roller skating. So I was like, oh, roller skating scene. Yes. <laughs> I, got, I was like, yes. But I didn't really know kind of like, I mean, I used to, when I when I first started Prisoner, it took me like probably three days to learn the lines. And as you went along, you actually, I could learn them in the cab. So you, you, used, to, you used to actually really, um, when you first started, it was hard to learn the lines. And then essentially, I'd learned him in the cab on the way to, you know, to Channel 10. So you got used to it. So it was actually really quite easy. And, yeah, they, they change the lines a bit sometimes, but they, they'll throw you for it, you know. But, the, but you just sort of adapt to that. But, sorry, back to your story. Um, I, I think the roll skating rink, I, I can't remember a lot about it, but I, I remember it was fun. Yeah. They did that a lot. They actually kind of repeated the same sort of story where when um, Kath Maxwell and Merle Jones go roller skating at one point. Yeah, was, I know. It was literally <laughs> the same. On a bar, you know, like it was like, hang on. I know, is... I know. But, you know, it's, it's like um, in prison there was sort of like um, all of a sudden there was a warden and then there were a prisoner like three years later. So they'd actually like cast the same person but in a, in a different character well that was my like, knight's character um yeah she, she yeah. actually played joan's love interest as the officer yeah uh, terry malone yeah. I think. yeah i know yeah i know so it's really interesting because um you know well, television series people have like short memories well i think um you know Will, i mean Zuma has the uh record for playing nine characters in prisoner i think it was who's that Will Juma, who played uh, Lionel Felt, oh. as he was known for, but he played a lot of other parts. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God, I didn't know that. He also <laughs> this, uh, an, an older guy, I think, is it Arthur Barattle or something like that? He played about oh, 15 roles, you know, like he was a judge. <laughs> <Made it hippie. laughs> but, yeah, when you when it's oh. like a smaller character and then eight, two years later you're playing another information role, but when you've got a main... Yeah. Like, and then three years down the track, it's also again a main supporting character. It's kind of like, hang on, wait a minute, you know. I think what happens is it's like Jan Russ to be kind of like, oh, they were actually good actress, actor or actress. Um, let's just put them on again. No one will remember. But, that, <laughs> but essentially, when it goes to DVD and you know, or, or on YouTube. All of a sudden, you kind of go, oh, no. Oh. But at the time, I don't think many people noticed. No, when you've got things like non-ratings period, which goes... Yeah, when exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And later, and you can't remember an episode from 1981. Yes. <laughs> <you> watch the, <laughs> or Foxtel or whatever, you know, where it's not yeah. too... You sort of go, oh, wait a minute, hang on. Didn't that same storyline happen here and, blah, you know... <laughs> Yes. No, the actual the actual story, the character I found really hard. The, the one where Gerda Nicholson was an officer in Barnhurst, and then she, oh no, it was oh, like, I didn't know and that. And then she comes back as a governor a few years later. I thought that was. I didn't know that. <laughs> it was really interesting because Gerda Nicholson used to do Tai Chi. Yeah. On her off, 
on a um in between scenes and me being had no idea she's doing her tai chi in in a kind of a dark studio and i come in i'm like what are you doing and she's not talking to me i'm like oh okay all right bye <laughs> had no idea what she was doing <laughs> she's like she was totally silent doing this like and i was like what, what are you doing hmm. and she wasn't talking to me i was like oh fine see ya <laughs> hey, Matt, I mean, was, I was well. Hello, uh, Matt Julianne Newbold when she came into prison at the same time as Maggie, and like um, the freak fancied her. She was gagging for it and molesting her and all this sort of stuff. And then when Julianne Newbold comes back as a different character, you know, a few years <laughs> later, freak doesn't even give her a second look. She's not attracted to her. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that either. That's new to me too. It's real funny, some of that. I mean, it was like when Annie Phelan had played the officer at the very... Was it the first year she played an officer for a few episodes? Uh, yeah. And then she comes in later years as a top dog. It was, it was really funny. Ah, oh, right. So you just... No, because, I mean, I, I, as I said, I was, I was, before I was in it, I wasn't allowed to watch it. So I used to sneak it yeah. every now and again in my grandmother's, you know, um, <laughs> back room. So... I didn't and actually that- know much to this. So that's actually a surprise. not surprising, but Rob, you- quite funny. Sorry to cut you off. You were one of those because I remember back in high school, if you didn't, if you if you weren't allowed to watch Prisoner, we used to call my, you're one of those. <laughs> like, you know, <sighs> <extensive. laughs> then the that could watch anything. She'd, oh, did you see what happened last night in Prisoner? Oh, no, I'm one of those. One of those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't allowed to watch it at all. I used to sneak. Used to my mum watched it, and I used to sneak behind the couch and watch it. And halfway, oh, she'd there catch you go. Me. Oh, yeah, watch it with me. It wasn't uh, even bad. What, what? Why did they think that? Like, you I know, were gonna... it wasn't even. It wasn't bad at all. It was like <laughs> if you look at Wentworth now, like Wentworth is like full on, which is an incredible show. Yeah. But it, it's like, I mean, Wentworth was sort of like really name really. Oh, but, but now, because of its time. time it would have been full on. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, what were you allowed to watch? Sons and daughters where the brother and sister are having it off? Oh, you know, that's right. I mean, go on. It was. <laughs> well, chances. What, what about chances? Oh, well, that was chances. A... Oh, yes. <laughs> I was old enough to watch that at that, that time. That was good. Just just going back for a minute when you said you walked yeah. into the studio uh, and saw Gerda. So did you get to sort of walk around the set much? What was it like on like the actual yeah, set? Yeah, a lot. And, and... I would uh, well when I first started, it was kind of like um, because I I had watched it, and I was kind of like, oh my god, this is actually it was really interesting because they had kind of multiple sets at once because they would film um, they would film episode like episode by episode, so if they had to have Joan's house or the prison, it would all be in the same area. And it was really funny because <clears throat> the pris like the actual, I mean, I, I used to watch it on the green room. So the, the actual, um, the prison, all this, all of the, um, all of the bricks were just um, wood. Yeah. And then, the, and when they, then they closed the door, it was all, all um, sound effects because it was basically just plastic. Wow. So that's that was that was the first thing I was like, wow. So I used to I used to when I first got there, I walked right around the whole set. I was like, oh my god, oh oh, that's that's Joe's place. Oh oh, that's the prison. That then they what they would do is they would have sort of one line of the of the um prison. I guess or guess um the um corridor. And they'd have one here and one here and one here. So they just kind of film and they'd come back to it again. So it was essentially it's like, you know, like I said, it's like it's it's television. It's it's like it's cheap. It was so cheap. Was the, uh, <laughs> I actually I thought it was amazing. Did the furniture like the desks and did they all have wheels on so they could just you know wheel out the front office and all that sort of oh, thing? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Everything was on wheels. Because essentially, if they had to do 
um, a special set. They just moved stuff off. But they also had sort of um, all, um, at the time, I guess they used Polaroids just to stay exactly where everything else was. So they have continuity. And, they, and even me, they have con- they, they, they take photos of me for continuity with my bruises and stuff. So next time they do it, they, do, they, they look at it and do exactly the same. I mean, that's, you know, I'm, I'm sure you all know that. I'm yeah. probably telling, you know, boring story, but anyhow. No, that's this, cool. I mean, you lived in... Um, sorry, Tim, go. Um, one thing that, that's probably never been covered, I'm not sure, is I know that you were actually nominated for a Logie Award. I Chris was. Most um, outstanding. I was. And so no, I know. No, for... Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was for Prisoner. Yeah. Yeah, um, Best Juvenile. So, so I went to the Logies. And how did you find out you were nominated? I don't know. I think I, I think I got an invitation. So I got the invitation and said, you've been nominated for a Logie for Best Juvenile Talent at the time. They don't have that anymore. And um, so I was, in, I was doing Zoo Family at the time. And so... Um, and I also couldn't cut my hair, so it was quite long. So the, the <laughs> I'm sure you, I, I I don't know if you've seen the photo, but she actually gelled my hair right up like this, and I had a I had a um jade green suit on because that was my favourite colour at the time, and I asked my agent to come with me, which is actually my mum was actually quite disappointed, but um. My agent hadn't been to Logies before, and she's been. She was so good to me, so she came with me. It was eighty five, nineteen eighty five. Um, I didn't win, <laughs> but it was it was amazing. It was it was so strange because, you know, you. It was at um the World Trade Center in Melbourne at that time, and there was sort of like all these stars, and and Mel Blanc was there from um who from the um Bugs Bunny. Um, impersonations. Wow. And I was talking to all these people, and, and then Jay- basically they said to me, "You need to be in your seat when your name is called. Otherwise, you should leave." Said- <laughs> yeah, they were like, "You need to be. If you're not in your seat, you need to leave." So I was in my seat, and they didn't have, didn't didn't um announce my name. I was like. <laughs> Who are you up against? It was very strange. It was very strange. It was still another strange thing because I remember sort of I was with my agent and she knew a lot of people, so she's introducing me to a lot of people. And it was just that was actually strange to me. Even see if that wasn't strange to me, going to Logies was very strange. You're sitting because on the... all these people, like like you know, um a country practice was huge, Penny Cook, and all these people. And then after and the after party, they're all in their rooms at the Rialto. We're going from room to room. Oh, and I'm a like 13 year old <laughs> with my agent, which is just bizarre. Were you sitting on the same table as the other prisoner cast that were invited that yes. year? Yes. Yeah. 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 Because I know Berta was actually nominated for Best Supporting Actress that year as well. So Prisoner actually got two nominations. Um, and oh. I, think, I think it won Best Program Produced in Victoria. So it actually won oh, a lot. I can't actually remember that. Berta was up for all best I remember, I, All I remember is I didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> you always remember those things. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, the winner was uh, Ken Talbot for Danny's Egg. Yes, that's. Oh uh, no, no, it was it was a girl. It was a, it was a um um Beth. Beth somebody for for Danny's Egg, but it was a girl. Was yeah. it? Yeah. Sure. I remember that because I remember who did who. I remember who won and who didn't win. <laughs> can can and you tell it. the list the listeners and the viewers what Zoo Family was? I I not seen Zoo Family. I think so. Know. Zoo Family was it was. So basically, after well, when Prisoner finished, um, I auditioned for Zoo Family. So it was my character was kind of like a crazy, like you know, um, 
I don't know, had, had an imagination. So, so I remember when I went for the audition, they, t- they gave me the, the script. Hang on, Robert. And they said, you know, I'm going to can and do what you want in the meantime. Like I jumped off things. So I was like, hang on. I think you're frozen just for a. Oh. I know you're Yeah, back. sorry. Sorry, do you know where where do I leave off? No, uh, Zoo fam. Yeah. Uh, so essentially when I went for Zoo Family, they my character was basically sort of um had a inner voice and it was uh, sort of like a, a crazy person who who had a you know, I was sort of crazy. So I remember I used to they said, I'm gonna put the camera on. And you just do what you want, what you think Tim would be. And I'd be jumping off tables and I was like fighting and everything. And they went, they basically said at the time, I think you got this. Yeah. <laughs> so I did that for, I had a tutor. So I did that for six months. And it was cancelled after that because it was, it was pretty corny. Like as television shows in, um, children television shows in the early 80s of were really corny and then after that i did the show called saturday so i had tutor for that as well so i didn't go to school for the whole of year eight oh wow and it and it was and it was sort of like so i mean it was really funny because when i would get a cab to the zoo my brother and my sister used to be waiting at the bus stop with their friends and they Basically, the bus stop was not far from my house, so they'd see me get in the cab. All the all the all the kids see me get in the cab and go past, and it was just. I thought that was a bit weird because there's all my my brother and sister and their friends, and I'm sort of going off to the zoo for the day. So I used to work from I I yeah probably. I used I think they used to be at the bus stop at seven thirty, so probably seven thirty till probably five. Five because otherwise it gets dark. So at the zoo you can't and they had a sort of they had a set in it in, in the the house that they had was a set within the zoo. And we had bikes, so we could bike ride right right around the zoo. We love that. <laughs> Anyhow, you don't know the Bazoo family, so I'm just talking about no, myself. I like to, I like to learn this. <laughs> a zoo family, that was that different shooting zoo family? Because I, 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 my memory, it was shot on film. Um, it was a yes. Crawford thing. Yes, so it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Taking longer, you know, checking the gate and all that sort of bizzo. Oh, yeah, and they used to, and essentially when, I mean, it was the same as in prison. When they used to have, if they used to follow people, they had to dro- put a whole track in. So all the gases, all, all the people who have to put a whole track in. Now you've just got um, something on you that you know you can you can move, but at the time it took forever. So it actually, you know, they have to set everything up, and you know you'd have to go into the wardrobe, and makeup. The worst thing I hated was because it wasn't shot in sequence. I always had to get go and get changed, and I used to hate that having to go back into wardrobe and get changed into something, go back on set. Come back, get changed into something. Come back. It was. I was really, actually, I didn't like that at all. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm talking. Talking about the continuity person with you. <laughs> yeah, you know, like they, they would always just take pictures of you because you know it wasn't shot in sequence, and then you know <clears throat> they have to look at you, and then you know you have. Uh, no, you, know, you have to tuck it in that way, and you know, something. Oh. You walk yeah, out yeah. on pulling the collar over here and doing, you know. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I mean, I think it's. I, I, I mean, I haven't been acting for a really long time, so I don't know how it's changed. But I would imagine it's all digital and stuff like that. So, I mean, obviously it is. I mean, things change. And did you keep up? Um, having an agent and, and being in the circuit and sort of, you know, putting yourself out there. After... I did. It was really, yeah, it was really strange because um, when I was younger, I had no fear. Um, 
you know, like I said, I would go into a um, <clears throat> catacomb and I'm like, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. And I usually did. I didn't get a few things, but I usually did get everything because of the confidence. When I got into my teenage years, I got more self-conscious. And I remember <clears throat> um, I did a, a Channel 2 show um, and the casting director was called Greg Apps. And he was a champion of, of me. So every time I saw him, he would always cast me in something. And then I saw him when I was, he he asked me to come in the scene to do a, um, a TAC, TAC ad, like a, like a road crash ad, and to improvise. And I was like, I was kind of probably going through puberty and I was actually really self-conscious. And I remember the look in his eye was kind of like, oh, he's lost it. Oh. So I kind of thought, yeah, I've lost it because I it, I just saw it because I was actually really self conscious and I've never been self conscious when I was young, and going into my into puberty and stuff, I sort of thought I was very self conscious, and then I just saw each casting agent that I've worked with kind of go, you know, <laughs> just kind of like, okay, thanks. <laughs> so That's then great. all I did really. Do you like, you know, shoot puberty, you know, suddenly become tall? Because my memory of you is you were quite a tall person. Yeah, I was tall. I was always tall. But, um, yeah, I, I just think in my teenage years, I just got really kind of like self-conscious and I really sort of um, um, just didn't, I, I wasn't, um, I could just see it in all the casting agents' look. And so then I was doing voiceovers. So I would go, <clears throat> like, I'd go at lunchtime. I'd go into a studio, a, a cab again, go into the studio, do a voiceover, and then come back to school. And then I was kind of like, oh, this is what I remember used to <laughs> doing voiceovers. But I was like, you know, I was getting paid a case, so that was fine. And did then... It, sorry, being on prison, did that open a lot of doors for you, though, into other auditions for other shows? Yeah, but I always had to audition. Like, it was, there was always a cat call. Yeah. So I wasn't, I wasn't the first person to okay. get, it didn't okay. open doors at all. Okay. So it's ba basically, I had to, like, Sue Family had to, there was a cat call, I had to prove myself. Um, commercials, always kind of went my way but there was only sort of three four or five of those and then yeah then I was like you know in my teenage years and I sort of thought okay so I'm self-conscious I think I'm done with this like I think this is it yeah I, I just sort of thought <clears throat> it's not fun anymore it was always fun and I sort of thought it's it's not fun because I'm sort of a bit sort of um, hesitant, and I never got anything either. So I realised that that was that was it. So then I went to did year twelve, went to uni, and then wanted to always wanted to be a graphic designer. So I was, and did that for sort of twenty six seven years. Um, that's what brought me to Sydney because the head office of an agency I was working for was up here. And then did that for a long time. Um, I was working for Sachi and Sachi for quite a long time on David Jones, doing lots of catalogues. And then I got retrenched from there because they were retrenching quite a few people. I was freelancing a lot overseas going overseas, shooting overseas, doing all of that sort of that stuff. And then that all sort of um, stopped because I started getting sort of um, um, uh, um, um, interns and stuff that basically I was doing like three days a week cleaning up their mess. And I sort of thought, oh, what was this for? Yeah. And then so recently I did a community services degree and now I'm um, helping like vulnerable people during the day. So that's I've had like three careers. My mum said acting, yeah. design, and now carers. We got carer. Can I interrupt and just go back a little bit when you said yeah. that you're self conscious and and you know 
you were such yeah. you're doing a lot of auditions and you're on a lot of shows. I mean, you're living pretty much every kid's dream at the time. I mean, there would Absolutely. be so many kids that would have loved to have been on on all those shows. But what yeah. what did you made you also like all of a sudden become self conscious and, and not want to do it anymore? Like, what do you think? I think it was just, uh, I think it was puberty, and then you sort of start start to self doubt yourself. Okay, you know, you just go through you just go through that sort of stage of because. Before that, I was fearless. Yeah. And then actually, it wasn't actually even, I didn't even realize I was. I just sort of thought, I look at all the other kids and go, I'm going to get this. And, 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 and I usually I did. I didn't, I, sometimes I didn't, but that was okay. And my mum used to say to me, it's really interesting because you, you're never disappointed when you don't get, get, it, get something. And I, I never was because I sort of thought, well, there's another one coming up. So my mum was actually more kind of disappointed for me than I was. And she'd say, oh, don't worry. Be, I'm, like, I'm fine. You know, there's be another one. Because I was never actually disappointed. I've, I, I've lost, like, I used to, I, I think when I was in, I, I know when I was in high, when I was in probably year nine, there was a film that they were filming and I was going to, I don't know what the story was, I was going to, I was going to go around Australia, and so at the end of the year, I said goodbye to all my friends because I was supposed to start in January, and then it was cancelled. So I came back to school, and all my friends were like, "What are you doing here?" And I was cancelled, and Mum was like, are you, "Like you said, all goodbye to your friends. Are you okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, well, it just didn't work out." I mean, I, I actually was quite disappointed a little bit because I would have liked to travel around Australia, like as as a as the, it was a film actually, but it didn't happen, and that's what happens, you know. You ever feel like you know a bit later in life, so maybe in your twenties or whatever, sort of ever felt like oh, maybe I might just go get an agent and do some more acting or do a bit of theatre or write something or anything? No, like that? no, yeah. I don't know why, but no. I I've, I kind of like sometimes I can't, can't um can't mentalize things like okay that was when I was young and really it's sort of like <clears throat> it's strange to talk about it because because I was sort of twelve at the time for me it's sort of like a lifetime ago I mean it was such a long time ago but it was such a great time as well yeah so to relive it is actually quite nice now. Um, the show continued um, for quite a few years after, you know, your storyline exited. Did yeah. you actually see what was happening in the show, you know, the following Oh, year? yeah, absolutely. I watched it all, like, all the time. How would you? you know, yeah, until, yeah. The, until the freak was put into prison. <laughs> I thought, I think that's on its last legs now. <laughs> you, could you see, like, if, if it went for another season with the freak actually in prison, could you see um, Shane coming back and visiting her? Out of the blue, say, yeah. <laughs> as an adult, uh, I think yeah. ten years later. Well, it was, it was really funny because it's really funny because um, a friend, like um, my sister-in-law, is a producer at, at um, was a producer at the time at, at Foxtel, and she said, "With Wentworth, would you come back as Shane?" Oh, really? And I was like. And uh, you know, obviously, it was it was it was um, played by an indigenous indigenous person, uh, and I thought that was good because I I didn't want to do it because it's it's actually a reimagined. She was saying to me, "If you want to do it, I can get you into it." But I sort of thought when I started watching it, I sort of thought it's all sort of reimagined, so I don't think Make it's going to work. Yeah, and also I I didn't want to do it because I was like, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm, just, I'm like, you know, at my age, I'm just sort of like, I, I, yeah, I'm not interested in acting anymore. Yeah. Now your, um, your adoptive dad on Prisoner was Bob Taylor, played by Terence Donovan, who's a really oh, yes. Australian actor. What was it like working with Terence? Oh, that was that was really funny because we, <clears throat> the house that they had was like an AV Jennings display home. Oh, was it? So it was, yeah, yeah. It was, and, and everything was like rocking around and stuff. But I, re I remember, I remember Terence, and I remember my mom, my my foster mom, and my 
my foster sister, that was actually quite interesting because um, I knew Terence from, I've, I've met Terence before from something I was in, but I can't remember right now. But yeah, he was great. I mean, they were all, they were all good. Yeah. I mean, it was it was just so funny because like we're all filming inside this like AB Jennings display home, and I'm kind of going, "Wow, this is an amazing house! What an amazing house!" <laughs> <laughs> and that would have, I think I know where that would have been a bit further down near where the cemetery is on on um, Ferntree Gully Road. I bet you there was all yeah. Those... Well, it's not far; wouldn't be far from Nana Warning, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, the actress that played um your stepmum, she had played. Uh, I prostitute. can't remember her. He was a prostitute a few years. Not, not the actress wasn't, but she oh, played a prostitute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> she actually <laughs> prostitute um, when Maggie, when the freak first came into it. And I think she was one of the ones that was murdered, you know, when there was that, the nurse yeah. that was. Oh, gross. the whole Neil Murray storyline. The... And. I think there's, there's a wonderful scene where yeah, she... so that's better memory than I do <laughs> that prisoner, of the course. Freak, her style, and she's like, she drops her, you know, she puts a leg up, she goes, do you want binoculars? And like, she's got it. A... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can... Bucks, I mean, you can get a... And then sort of like, um, <laughs> is later, she's this, like, real... She'd aged about oh. 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Mum. Making um, what are those horrible things with the egg and crumbs? What what's that thing called? Um, oh, the, on the picnic. Egg. Scotch eggs. Yeah, Scotch making eggs. Scotch <laughs> picnic. <laughs> what, that, what happened to Scotch eggs? Believe, you don't see a Scotch, Scotch eggs now. Where are the Scotch eggs <laughs> gone? They were never... <laughs> <So> nice. <laughs> uh, oh, funny. So um, yeah, did you remember the pic the big picnic that um the the two fat you know you went with Annie Joan and 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 uh, oh yeah and I was really I was really like possessive of her and she was like really embarrassed I remember that like the storyline um because I was like you know don't talk don't don't talk to Annie Joan ah, she's my Annie Joan don't talk to her she's only here for me <laughs> so I remember I was really possessive so I think that was kind of like the swan song yeah. Yeah, how, that was kind of the end. How do you think Shane would have felt if he actually found out that his precious Annie Joan, who was looking after him, was actually going to work every day, beating up oh, women? Oh, no. them. Well, that's the whole point of my episode, of my character. So do you think did you think he could have turned bad as well and um you know, started drug dealing well, with the mob? I remember I, I remember I um lit up a cigarette once, but it was a, it wasn't a real cigarette, and then she said, oh, Shane, stop smoking. I said, well, you're smoking. And she goes, okay, we'll both give up. And she, apparently she gave up smoking. <laughs> um, you mentioned about McDonald's, how they shut it down for, for that scene. You also had the one at yeah. Luna Park, which I thought was cool. Did they do the same thing with Luna Park as well? Yes. Yeah. Oh, did they shut it down? Oh, and I, and I, was, I, I love that too. No. So that, that was closed down, and they had all actresses that all all like extras there, and I thought that was incredible. Like I was actually going, I was like, they'll give me fairy floss, and I was like, I'll have some fairy floss, please. In between between scenes, you'd have been high. Like, it, it was like my dolls again. It was like, oh my god, I'm here in Luna Park. I love. Like I was 12 years old. I love Luna Park. Yeah. So I was kind of like, oh my god. Another, what else can I do? <laughs> like, put another scene in where I'm, you know, I don't know, in a fantastic place that I love. <laughs> hey, not only you got you done you three. Got every kid's dream as an actor, you got to go Luna Park, uh, roller skating, Mac is it? Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> and the best one. I remember, that I, um, I remember that I, um, in the scene, I saw my mum in That's the Luna Park. The real mum, yeah. Yeah. An actress mum. Yeah. And I never actually met my mum. She I just saw her in the distance. But um yeah. And that was sort of like an arc as well. So but yeah, that's amazing. I remember yeah. I remember before before we even started filming and they closed the park and I was going through the through the um uh, right. 
roller coasters and I was doing everything. And I'm like, hey, you gotta come back now. <laughs> you gotta get you in makeup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bit later on this is what i wanted to bring up just before a bit later on you go fishing with a major and you just do this amazing job of you you pull up a, a line oh, and, uh, that's dead right on the, so and then it's dead it's actually dead it was, yeah and then that you have to move it and pretend it's alive oh, God, i totally forgot about the major how do you act with a dead fish <laughs> yeah i know it was so obvious and I, wait but you could just like like and I had to like, I had to move it. Like, this is a lie. <laughs> oh, that's television for you. <laughs> but, hey, Jeff, I, forgot about, I forgot about the major, her dad. Yeah. I actually totally forgot about him. Oh, Bleasby or something. Do you have memories of him? No, no. not much. Um, I remember the actor. I, I remember his face, but I don't actually remember a lot of the episodes with him there wasn't a lot there wasn't a lot of episodes with him yeah. probably three or four in, in the nine months i can't remember actually did did um i remember when my job were doing those uh outside broadcasts more than being in the studio all the time getting out to luna park and the roller skating rink and and maccas yeah and i remember being being outside of joan's house and my dog got poisoned <laughs> Yeah. So there was an out. There was a house, obviously in Nunawari, that um that was her outside. Um, I remember when my dog got dog got poisoned, and we had to go to the vets. So that was outside broadcast. Outside broadcasting was actually. Oh, sorry. Hang on a minute. All right. <sighs> sorry, so I'm trying to call me. Are we here? Yes. Oh, God. Hang, on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, hang on one second. Sorry, we're back. We Yeah, there we My are. My partner's trying to call me. <laughs> Barney Joan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry um, about that. Where were we? Tim, sorry. Um, I think we cut the or something, maybe. We're up to that. Um, yeah. 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 Oh, no, uh, doing um, OB work. Yeah. It's oh, serious. yeah. I remember that, like, a lot of it vividly. I mean, especially the outside drain scenes, which was like, it was probably like 11 o'clock at night. So, you know, it would be like a, a huge film from like, because it was night time. So you film from, I don't know, uh, seven o'clock until probably 11, 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> you would like to do that now. <laughs> like oh. I said. <laughs> Doesn't he run away as well? And like they go looking for him where he's fishing and it's at night and he's got hypothermia or something for some vague memory of that. Yeah, um, I remember that. I remember. I remember. I, I remember. I sort of, I ran away, and I was in some kind of, I was in some guy's house. I, I think I told you that I threw hot water in his face, but I don't remember. So I, I ran away a, a few times. I think. I think I ran away again, and I was at the front of um, Luna Park when it was closed. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I was like. Oh, those times, that ain't shown. <laughs> They'll kind of like just look like, just look like you know, you really miss her. I'm like, <laughs> it's funny with her character because she was so corrupt and so bad, but you still felt I know at the times, you know, you still felt like, oh, you know, she's lost yeah. her little son, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The story of like. <laughs> He just broke into her house too, and that's Sorry. She, the storyline oh, yeah. was, yeah, because yeah, that so was. I broke into her house and I fell asleep. Yeah, and she kind of she comes into the into the house. And you know how you say that music, like scary music, like what's going on, and then she finds me and wakes me up, and I sort of say, I go, I kind of went help. 
Are you are you the are you the, are you the cops because I saw a uniform? She goes, no, I'm a prison officer. Well, don't, don't. She goes, tell me one reason why I shouldn't call the cops. I said, my dog Nikki, <laughs> something like that. I can't remember exactly, but you know, but, Nikki was by my side. Did you know that storyline was actually borrowed from the wrestlers' years as well? Really? Oh, was it really? Um, no, I didn't know that. A few years beforehand, I think this would have been 7980, there was a character in the Restless Years called um, Artie, Artie Shaw. And yeah. the storyline is Miss Mackenzie, June Salter, comes home to her apartment, opens the door, and there's this little boy asleep on a couch. And she goes, what are you doing here? And episodes are down the track, she's adopting him. And, oh, um, well, there you go. That's television, <laughs> just rehash everything. <laughs> Freak, you know, now, you know, kind of... <laughs> Uh, sure, yeah, funny. he stayed in on the show, and I think he actually got a logie too. So, um, well, was... at least he got a logie. Got a logie. <laughs> You're dirty on it, aren't you? You want that logie? <laughs> yeah, you, you had to rub it in, didn't you? <laughs> so, yeah, they they often do that is regurgitate different, you know, from yeah. their sips, you know, and a lot of the actors too. As soon as like the rest of years finished, half the cast went to Sons and Daughters. Um, yeah, young... yeah. Uh, you know, so it was a grindy show. There was, you know, young doctors actors appearing in yeah. prison. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, I mean, if your actors reliable and they're good, why not hire them? Well, that's that's the. <clears throat> I think that's the reason why they were recast in prison because Jane Russell be kind of like, I know who to get for that character. It's and yeah, it's been two years. I won't remember. <laughs> if you won't remember, I mean, it's, it's just economics. Yeah. Did you ever have any uh, strange fan interactions over the years? Yes, I did. I had I had a guy keep writing to my agent with really shaky handwriting, and he was like, you know, um, I re- you know, we're destined to meet. Oh my god! And it was like, <clears throat> so it, it would always so it'd go to my agency and they'd send it on and okay. going. Yes, this is a bit weird, but it was like it was, yeah. And then I, I guess once I was in Zoo Family, prison was huge, and I and I'd been on it, and I couldn't go anywhere without somebody like you know coming up to me, you know, asking me, you know, are you the one for prisoner? You know, because of birthmark, of course, so that's easy in blonde hair. <laughs> that's an easy giveaway, um, but. I mean, no. Um, I, I was when, mobbed once. Sorry, Rob. When you were getting those letters, was this when? Was this like years later when you were an adult and the show had become a cult success, or was this at the time? No, at the time, I used to get quite oh. a lot of fan mail. Actually, I, I, remember, with... I actually got quite a lot of fan mail, but it used to go through my agent, and she just sent it on. But she didn't open them, so I got the shaky letter about three times from this person, and I sort of thought, oh, this is a bit weird. But, you know, the agent just would just send on the fan mail. She wouldn't actually open it. <clears throat> so the shaky writer, I sort of thought, I called her and said, you know, this is this is what's happening. Um, he's kind of being a bit freaky. Like, he was being a really bit inappropriate as well. So, you know... Like I was, I was like, you know, 12. So I was like, this is really weird. And also then somebody, I, for some reason I was, I, no, I, I, I actually, no, it's it my, it I actually did this. I Googled myself on YouTube, Shane Munro. And this person had done a. Oh, that a montage monologue. of you with the clip. I've seen that. Yeah. That- and it was. Very creepy. I thought yeah. that's so creepy. I saw it. And it, it was. was it was said. It was said to. It was said to. Um. 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 Some classical some music. Yeah. No, it was said. It was said to like. Um. Um. Who was the? Oh, I can't remember now. The. Um. Um. Anyhow, it, it was I said to music. The song I, I watched it. Um. The other day. It was. It was. It was, it was, it was like Billy Elliot. The Billy Elliot song. Yeah. It was a Billy um, Elliot. And it was just like it was so weird. Shane Munro, the, the music creeped out about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just sort of like, 
actually that actually creeped me out because I was like I was probably fifty at the time, forty nine, and I was like, why did I even look it up? Why did I do that? Why did I look it up? It was just really strange, and I sort of thought, and and it was he was a he was a grown adult, he was older, and I sort of thought that's that's quite creepy, and that's the only time I kind of went, oh, that's really strange, yeah. but you know, whatever. About a bit later in life, say you're in your twenties and that sort of thing, was prisoner because there was a bit time there where it being axed, it was you know it hadn't been repeated, and then suddenly in I think in 1990 or whatever, you know, people were you know leaving clubs and coming home and watching it at four o'clock in the morning when it was being repeated. That's right. And then at five, it just became huge. I remember Tasty having like a prisoner night where they had the original press, and um, no, I used to go to Tasty all the time. I remember the Tasty yeah, prisoner was tasty? event. Where was that? It was Common? in um um where was that? It's in Laneway. Yeah, it was down a laneway. It was a commerce yeah. club, I think. Oh, okay. Called. Commerce club, that's right. Yeah. And and they had a prisoner event and they and they dressed the drag queen as a as the um the freak. <laughs> and you go into an elevator to go up and she'd come in and she'd pat you down and she'd put some ammo and she'd say, What's this? I'm putting you on detention. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. no, little... no one actually no one actually knew because i didn't really I, essentially i haven't really talked about my acting really unless my family know so no one no one in tasty knew that when i was there that i'm doing a prison night because i just was wanted to be just anonymous i had awesome. a frankie door petition um yeah they had a frankie door lookalike competition they had like a lizzie's lizzie's bar and like it, you know, oh, had yes. It was like I remember that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and downstairs, something else. Um, it was like the freaks, but any look. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, they actually had the um the press there, and they I think the organizer or well, you know the promoter of the club went and got it from Channel Ten, amongst other yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been 94. I think it was just before it actually got raided themselves and people were actually stripped. And, oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that sort of thing, which was around about August 94, I think. So, um, yeah, so things yeah, were beginning. So around a bit. You know, when you're in your 20s, did people sort of remember and go, oh, you, oh yeah, you played the, the freak's son or whatever? It's frozen. Ah, uh, you still there, Rob? All frozen? No, you're not frozen. Ah, uh, it was really funny because oh, he's back. He's ah, uh, yeah. Um, so no one's recognised me for a long time, but then <clears throat> probably two years ago, someone said to me, "Are you from prison? Are you Shane?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yes. How did you? How did you even know? Like, how do you re how, like?" From a twelve-year-old to a fifty-one-year-old, how how does that even happen? I said to him. He said, "Oh, I just sort of I knew, I just knew." And it was just, that that was just one person, but not, and that was it. Nothing and that ever. With, I mean, did they say nice things? And were they a fan and all that yeah, sort of? Yeah, 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 really good. Yeah, but I was just like, how how did you even recognize me? Like that's crazy. But you know, that's it. That's how it goes. <laughs> I mean, Maggie, I mean, I did a, a little thing for, I don't know what I did it for. I sent something to um, someone and, and I, I don't know, it wasn't you guys, it was somebody else. And Maggie sent um, a, a hello to, I don't know, was it, was it you, Matt? No. Was it Matt? Was that you? The, the did I, myself and Maggie sent something to? Maybe it wasn't you. I, wasn't I can't remember. Sure. Yeah. So we both had to do a, like a hello. And so that was sort of um, the last time I sort of spoke about my role. <laughs> have, you, have you seen Maggie in the in, in the later years at all or, or not? No. Well, I'm in Melbourne. I'm in Sydney now. But no, I haven't seen her at all. I mean, I've seen her on, I've seen her when, you know, when we were doing a, across for somebody and I saw her 
doing the cross. I did a cross. She did a cross, and I watched. I watched her. So that's the last time I've seen her. But she's she's looking great. Yeah, yeah. We did an interview with yeah. her. She was a lot of fun. She was great. Yeah. Oh, she's a lot of fun. She's always. She was always a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Was the um was the money good as a, as a child actor back then? Was it was it good money? That, for the it work? was yeah. yeah yeah I mean it wasn't like it wasn't like heaps of money. I mean I could I bought I bought a car. That's how much money I had. Yeah. I bought a, a, a good car when I when I was turned eighteen. I bought my sister and my brother bikes. Oh nice. Um, I I think I gave my I. I gave my, I think we, when we moved into the new house, I gave them money for the pergola. <laughs> so, like, really big money. <laughs> I mean, I was a child, so child child rates would have been totally different to adult rates. Yeah. But, you know, there was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was okay, but it wasn't like big money. <laughs> yeah. Is it frozen? No. It's um, frozen again. Sorry, keep freezing. Oh. <laughs> Am I frozen? No, you're back now. You're there. <laughs> so after um, you know, working on prisoner and being an actor and that sort of thing, and you, you were saying that you went to was it um what did you say you were doing visual communication or graphic design? Graphic design, sorry, graphic design. Yeah. Yeah. So were you and you worked for a company. How did you start working graphic design? Did you go to like you know university? Um, yeah, and, and... I, did, I went to University of Melbourne for, in Monash for three years. Um, I, I just always want I, I like when I did um, graphics and art in Year Twelve. I really got really interested in graphic design, um, and I decided that like I'll just like you know, apply to all the unis, and then. <clears throat> Basically, they kept saying to me, oh, you need to do a TAFE course. And I was like, what? So um, then I got, you used, you used to get an A, B, or C letter. A letter. A letter meant that you were definitely accepted. A B letter means you'll go from the second round, and C means you didn't get anything. So I got four C letters, and at Monash University, I got an A letter. Oh. So I went to Monash for three years. Um, loved it, and then just went straight out into the first job I got. The first job I went for, I got. So you know, it was just it, it, like I don't know. You so you went yeah. back into industry with graphic design. Were you designing um, like covers for like festivals and things like you know that that sort of thing? Program. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then I was doing a lot of. It's really funny because it's actually kind of like very similar to acting it was like you know it was very creative so I, I sort of thought god it's really funny that i've actually um landed in here because it's actually quite similar because it's you know you're promoting yourself uh, with what you're doing which was quite interesting to me because i didn't actually realize that at the time and i actually realized that actually <clears throat> i'm sort of doing the same thing i'm sort of like you know you know, you, you're trying to get um, acceptance from a client or, you know, like acting, you're trying to get a part. And it's really interesting because I was I just thought about that a little bit later, you know, when I was working, thinking actually this is actually not too, too different from acting because it's like, you know, you, you're constantly doing a role. You know, you're presenting to a client. It's the same thing. Well, not the same thing, but you know, similar. How did you feel acting and being so young and being on that show and taking direction from the different directors that were coming in episode per episode? Like, were you able? You know, I, mean, I remember when I was twelve, I couldn't sit down or listen. To, you know, like was that like yeah. a special to sort of take direction and take it? You know, and and stretch their dialogue, their given word, and take you know to to create this character on screen. Like, was was that easy? Was that sort of difficult for you? I know. I know. Remember, I I remember it being quite easy, actually. I mean, like the like the first 
day when you when you they basically say this is where you stand, this is where the camera's gonna be. I think it was I think it was Monday and Tuesday, I think were were rehearsals. So they basically said this is where the camera is, this is your spot, this is where you need to be, this is where you move, this is where you go. And then they film it. But essentially it wasn't always the director it was always kind of the same consistency of your role and also all the characters. So it didn't matter from director to director because it was always the same kind of sequence. Yeah. And that and I mean, you know, it, it was always the same. It was like in Zoo Family, they had a different director every every week. So it, it, you just sort of like, but it, it's, it was always consistent because there was the producer behind the scenes, the story writers. So basically they just, basically, the directors basically just followed the, you know, the story arcs. Yeah. And I guess, I guess, direct, I, I guess you can, I didn't realise, but I think, I guess you can, um, see the difference between different directors but for me it didn't it didn't mean anything but i guess you know if, if you're if you're a purist you could see the difference between directors but i didn't didn't bother me <laughs> what why would they have had so many directors and different people on those shows back then tim i mean there was always a New director or producers, story writers, script writers, always different names on the credits. Well, I guess with something like Zoo Family, where it was 26 episodes rather than two yeah. episodes, yeah, you know, yeah. they would have rotated around. And I think yeah. happening in Prisoner, but I think with, with, um, with so Prisoner would Prisoner had a lot of different directors. Um, <clears throat> I think basically it's like again, it's, it's probably cheaper. You know, to because I guess they were just freelancers. So having instead of having like full time directors and producers and stuff, I would imagine they were probably freelancers at the time. I I don't know. I'm not a. I'm, I wasn't part of any of that. But I think it's obviously a a cost thing. And it could have been, you know, what what the actual producer. Yeah. Was, I mean, you know, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Whoever was producing at the time, you know, yeah. produce and change rules and decide, right, we're sticking to, you know, three main core directors, uh, oh, that sort yeah. of um, same as the writers and the writers' room, I guess, if they had one. They um, always had the, they always had the same um outside broadcast director for the whole time I was there. It was the same person. I remember that. Yeah. Well. Um and that probably Channel 10 person, I'm guessing, was actually employed by Channel 10 rather than by Grand Oh, yeah, probably. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And they did a lot of that. Like, you know, whenever you'd see a helicopter, it would actually have 10 eyewitness news written all over <laughs> yeah, it. <I> know. <laughs> they did have a helicopter there. It had a helicopter pad at the front of the, the uh, okay. front of the um the studios. <laughs> they still leave the yeah. uh, the Grundy's logo on at the uh, the bank where Joan Ferguson took the money in the, the last episodes. Ah, <laughs> oh, Probably. Oh, that's it'll be the Channel 10 helicopter for sure. <laughs> you have eye with 10 low. Yeah. Actually, I remember I mean, when they dropped Joan back from when she was out in the, the ocean when uh, you know, the boat episode, and they uh brought Joan back via helicopter, a police rescue, but it had eyewitness news all over the <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that bit. That's hilarious. Well, they, <laughs> I, they always... I remember I remember one time they um, I was in when I was recovering from being in the um um in the drain, and I was in the hospital. They get um somebody sent me a card. I don't know it was uh, who whoever whoever saved me, and I opened it up, and they they filmed it, and it said, "Dear Robert." <laughs> so okay. I was like, no, kind of like, no, sorry, we, they don't. They won't notice that. Look, we'll just we'll do it. No, keep no, it going. Really, yeah. So I was like, dear Robert. <laughs> yeah. so, so props up. Hilarious. Pro props department actually sort of wrote your real name instead of the character's name. Is that is that right? Oh, or no. It... It's so funny. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I have no idea, but it was like, and, and they just kept it. They kept it in. <laughs> I want to fact that like some of the times when all the prisoners prisoners are on um you know their outside rec time and depending on where the camera is you can actually see the antennas on top of channel yeah. of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> it's well, walls and the you know and all this stuff which I never really saw but then hang on wait a minute on top of this prison there's TV antennas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean it wasn't a real prison? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Um, is there anything you want to add before we wrap up, Tim? No, no, this is this is great. It's yeah. um, a lot of fun. But it's, I've it's had nice, a lot of fun. It's a nice knowing what you've been up to and what kind of music yeah. you're in. You go see bands or movies or anything like that. Oh, you said you did a bit of spot now. Clubbing, did a bit of clubbing, you know, back in the tasty days. Tasty. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, I, we're pretty um we're pretty lame now. <laughs> what about growing up? What kind of music did you like? I love your are you fix. I love Jenny Lennox. I was obsessed with Jenny Lennox. I see when I was in when I went overseas when I was fourteen by myself. Um, um, one of my friends knew where Jenny Lennox's mum lived, so I knocked on her door. Oh, really? I said, oh, I've come all the way from Australia because uh, it was Christmas. I thought she'll be there for sure, and like she'll be she'll be in the background for sure. So I knocked on the door and said, I'm I'm from Australia, <laughs> you know, like like brash as anything, um, you know. Uh, and well, she, she had an amazing song like, called um, Little Bird. Do you remember that song, Little Bird? Oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah. They I mean, use that on uh, they use that on strip tease with Demi. Olympic. That song, yeah. oh, I love Diva. Diva was my favorite. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. I was I'd obsessed. Like, and I was like, really obsessed with New York Mix and also no, Annie Lennox. Do you remember No More I Love You's in the film clip like that? We should just come. Oh, out. yeah, I know. I know, like cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> I know, she's so theatrical. That's what I love about her. Yeah. What about <laughs> Jones? We into Grace Jones. She was pretty theatrical and out there, too. Love Grace Jones, too. Absolutely. Hey, Mr. My partner doesn't like hey, Grace Jones at all. He's like, I just turn that off. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I really, I, I really like it. So you're more into the divas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Actually, what, 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 that... what I did want to ask you, I, it was a question that Tim was going yep. to do. Is, um, we, we read that your favourite line on, just going back to prisoner for one more second, was rack off, you're not me mum. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. That's your so favorite. It's really funny because uh, it's so funny because um, my friends were, and my friends were in a club, and I went up to them and go, "Back off, you know me, mum." <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, it's actually the funniest line because it's just so absurd. <laughs> that's actually the. You're right. That's my my my. my, my I love that line. And so I've what, used what is- it quite a quite a few times. <laughs> what is it? I'm rack off. You're not me, mum. Rack off. You're not me, mum. Yeah. I used to say, used to say to Shane when I was like, you know, annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put it in a rack off. You're not me, mum. Rack off. <laughs> <laughs> it was all in the expression. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. What was it like that? Get it was on all the expression. It wasn't actually hand movements. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, well, I, um, is there anything else we're going to cover? I think we've covered everything. I think we have. I've really enjoyed this. Yeah. So what's what's on Rob's like? I mean, do you, do you want to go traveling? What are you going to do with the rest of um with your time? Oh, uh, we travel a lot actually. Um. We've just we've been to just got back from um, South America. Oh, amazing! We traveled quite a bit actually, so we've we've been quite fortunate with that. So, Chu Picchu, I think. Sorry, Chu Picchu. Did you go to Machu Picchu or anything like that, any of those things? No, we we lived in South Korea for two years okay. for Hamish's work, my partner, and that was good. That was probably five six years ago. Took our dogs with us. Now we only have one. Is sleeping right just beside me. <laughs> um, 
yeah, we just we just travel. We enjoy traveling, and that's about it. That's about as, as exciting as I am. No, that was great. <laughs> that was that was a huge insight. Into <laughs> country so you're doing well yeah <laughs> it'd be good to do a reunion a personal reunion like a reunion well, we that where you guys do or somebody else does that we just had one in august um what was it three weeks ago now? in melbourne yeah, yeah 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 a lot of fun yeah it was, it was a great day great afternoon yeah all right so, yeah, but um, yeah. Anytime you're down here for a re reunion, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Really enjoyed I'll, that. Um, I'll just wrap up. That was sorry, Tim. Would you come to a reunion and do your famous rack off? You're not me, mum. Long. <laughs> <laughs> I'll deal with the expressions. Expressions. <laughs> Amazing. That was episode 57 of Talking Prisoner. Please, if you can help us and support us, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this interview everywhere you can. This interview will also be across all the podcast platforms on Spotify, Apple, and wherever you get your podcasts from, and also on the talkingprisoners.com website. I can't thank you enough for coming on, Robert, and thank you to Tim. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you.